everybody, this is Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be talking about this Rocketfish TV Dock Kit. Everything you need to charge and play on a TV. So this is obviously a docking station for your Nintendo Switch, allows you to charge it, and also hook it up to a TV. So let's first uh, talk about why you might even need one of these in the first place. As you know, the Nintendo Switch and the new OLED version of the Nintendo Switch both come with a docking station, and allows you to hook that up to a TV. But why would you need a second one? Well, maybe you lost the first one. Maybe the first one broke. Maybe you have two TVs that you want to hook up the uh, the Switch to. Or maybe you've got one hooked up to your TV, but you want to have one easily uh, to throw in your backpack or to throw in some luggage so you can take it on a trip with you and you don't want to disconnect it from your TV. So people were looking for a second duck. In the early days, were buying all kinds of weird miscellaneous sketchy things off the internet. And uh, some of them, there was rumors of them bricking the uh, the Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure if that actually happened or not, but anytime you deliver power into a, a delicate device, that's not necessarily the right power that's supposed to be going into it. You do run the risk of, of messing something up. So this is no different. This isn't a Nintendo brand uh, device, but it is Rocketfish, which if you know is the, uh, the brand that Best Buy sells in their stores. So at least it gives you a little bit of confidence that there's a big company behind it and it's not going to damage your, your Nintendo. So let's take a look at the rest of the box here and see what, what else it has to say. So on this side, just a picture of uh, TV dock kit. On the back, it shows the contents. It's got the uh, docking station here. It says it's got cooling vents, a power input, HDMI port, a USB port for charging other accessories or possibly for hooking up a wired controller and then includes an AC adapter. It shows that it is compatible with the switch but not the switch light. Obviously the switch light does not have a docking connector on it. it does not have TV mode but uh, on the website it does show compatibility with the OLED version of the switch so even though the packaging doesn't say it the website does say it does. And on the last side here, it says it's travel friendly, compact design, great for travel, allows you to have TV mode and then an extra USB charge port. So you can charge your pro controller or charge anything else. Or like I said, you can plug in a wired controller. So let's open this bad boy up and see what it looks like and see how it works. So let's take a look at the hardware here itself. This is the main docking station itself. So we've got, like I said, it's got cooling vents on either side. Hard to see in the camera, but there are cooling vents there. AC power input, HDMI out, and here's your USB charging. Now to give you a comparison of size compared to the original docking station to see if it is actually travel friendly, here it is next to the original dock. So you can see it is a little bit shorter. It is a little bit narrower. And it's going to be a little bit lighter as well. Another thing to notice is a lot of people didn't like the front screen protector here that you would slide your Nintendo Switch into and they complained about scratching the front of the glass. So with this design it's obviously completely open and no chance of scratching your screen. Now this device currently sells at Best Buy for around $50. And is that a good deal? Well, to compare it with the original Nintendo Switch dock, when it is on sale at the website, they sell them for $60. Currently on the website, it says not available. Um, they do have refurbished units for about $40. So are you really getting a good deal? Well, the, the big difference is the dock station that Nintendo sells does not include a power adapter. So you have to provide your own power adapter, which could be anywhere from... 10 to 20 to 30 dollars depending on which model you get and which brand you get and this one does come with a power adapter now one thing to note on this power adapter is that it's not a USB-C adapter so here's the the wall wart and the cable that comes with it and you can see it is a barrel connector so that plugs in here and it does charge your unit but the big difference is you can't take this charging cable with you and charge the Nintendo Switch by itself, as opposed to if it was a USB-C input, then you'd be able to charge it. Now, I did purchase this one open box for $40, so 
So that's why the cable looks like it's all kind of tangled up here. But on the, uh, on the bright side, there was a second cable in the box, in the open box, which is not supposed to be included. In fact, this one does say Nintendo on it. So I believe whoever returned this returned their USB to USB-C cable for possibly a Pro Controller, a charging cable for the Pro Controller. That was probably plugged in here, and they didn't realize it, and they returned it back to Best Buy. Their loss, my gain. Now let's look at some of the labeling here as far as the power input and output. And on the bottom of the dock, it shows a rating of 5 volts at 2 amps, which, if you know anything about the switch, doesn't make any sense at all because it requires a lot more voltage and current than that. So I think that must be intended to be the labeling of the USB output of the extra USB charger that they include, that extra port in the back there. Um, and, but on the back, it actually says 5 volts, 1 amp, which matches the documentation. The, uh, the book that comes with it and says that it does have a 5 volt, 1 amp output. So I'm not really sure what that's talking about because on the actual charger itself, it shows 15 volts at 2 amps, which is a little bit closer to what I'd expect the input to be to this docking station. But let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it all works. All right, now we've got everything hooked up. We've got the uh, Nintendo Switch plugged into the dock. We can see that there is a green light indicating that it is powered on and charging. I've got the uh, just a wireless or a wired controller plugged into the back so I can control it. It works fine through that USB port. You can see the video is making it to the portable display there just fine. And if we look at, go back to the home screen, you can see it is charging. The indicator there shows that it's at 33% and the charging indicator shows that it is charging through that dock as well. So it does look like everything's working as expected. Now there, are, there is one uh, oddity that I need to mention. When I plugged the switch into the dock and it started charging before even there was any video coming out, it made a high pitch whining noise. And if you've ever had any kind of cheap electronics before, you've heard that whine noise before, which I got to tell you, to be honest, is a tiny bit concerning, but it appears to be working. There's no strange smells, which is always good. And uh, I'm sure it's just uh, the quality of the transformer probably and the uh, AC adapter that's, that's causing that or some of the cheap wiring in between. But overall, looks like this travel dock is going to do exactly what it what it's supposed to do. So to wrap up this video, let's have some final thoughts on this on this unit. Is this something that I would buy, or something that I think is a, a good deal? And you got to compare that to the other options out there. So the the main Nintendo option would be buying a sixty dollar dock and a twenty dollar officially licensed uh, charger. So you're looking at $80 versus this one is about 50 if it's brand new. So 80 versus 50, that's kind of a, a toss up. If you like the design of this one better, then that gives it a couple points in that direction. If you like the size, the shape, uh, the portability, then that, that obviously pushes you in, in the direction of this one. If you find one of these open box, then uh, save another 10 bucks like I did, then that's always a, an option as well. But there are other options out there. For example, if you wanted to stick with the Nintendo brand and you felt more comfortable with that, a better option might be just to keep an eye out on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and try to find someone selling their Nintendo Switch complete unit. That would be the, uh, the Switch, the Joy-Cons, the power adapter, the dock, all that wrapped into one. And you might find that for around $150. Uh, maybe somebody that's upgraded to the OLED version, maybe someone that's just tired of it, maybe someone that took it away from their kid because they got in trouble. Who knows, you might be able to find one for around 150 and maybe that's a, a better deal. Then you've got two docks, and you've always got a second backup uh, switch. So for me personally, I think I'm going to keep this one. I do have two TVs that I regularly hook the switch up to, and I am getting tired of carrying it from, from one TV to the other. So I'm going to leave this one hooked up to one TV and leave the original dock hooked up to the other one. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about the Rocketfish TV dock kit. 
Is it something that you would look at, or do you have a better option? As always, remember to like and subscribe. If you like this type of content, then it helps us out by clicking that like button. And if you want to stay in touch with other videos that we're making, then uh, hit that subscribe button. And also check out our Family Geekery podcast, available on iTunes and everywhere else that you can find podcasts. And until next time, peace out and geek out.